Hi everyone, I hope you are joining me. Otherwise, this would be really awkward. But I've heard some of you would like me to do a live video. Or what actually happened was I hit a really, 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 really wonderful milestone on my YouTube channel, which is 10,000 subscribers. Hi Jacqueline van Strip. Yes, yeah, so I hit 10,000 subscribers and it's such an amazing, amazing, amazing thing for me. I started my YouTube channel on my birthday this year, which was the 22nd of April. And this was one of my milestones and one of my really, I would say one of my big goals as a new YouTuber was to hit 10,000 subscribers. So I just went on Instagram a while ago and I asked you whether you would like me to do a live video thanking you and celebrating my 10,000 subscribers. And here I am. Thank you, Anel. <laughs> Thank you, Letitia, for tuning in. Here I am doing the video and what I thought of doing was to actually have you ask me some questions that you would like me to answer. And then I thought of also reading you some of my favorite um, and special comments on YouTube that you've shared on some of my visit videos. So yes, please go ahead. I will go on and read some of my favorite comments while you guys can ask me some questions. Let me see. By the way, I'm in my office at Revite Health. And yes, that is my Miss World dress hanging in the background. <laughs> um, it is on a mannequin in my office and just so you know where i am okay some of my favorite comments first one was on my assumptions tag video and it was by desmary lynch i love your natural hair Raleigh. you are just such an amazing and comfortable person thank you for sharing your life with us and just letting us get to know Raleigh and not miss sa or miss world truly love your channel so the reason why this comment was so special for me was because one of my main goals with the, know me as Miss World or Miss South Africa or a medical student, but my goal for this channel was to actually just film videos that will kind of take you on a journey of who am I, what do I do on a daily basis, and just to show that I'm human like everyone else and I've just loved this journey on YouTube. So thank you very much for that comment, Desmary. Uh, okay, first question, Amarisa van Henning. Tips for giving a speech to younger girls. Okay, so I'm not sure if some of you know this, but public speaking has been one of my biggest fears since I entered Miss South Africa for the first time. I entered Miss South Africa in 2011 and I was 19 years old and I was one of the top five in the competition. And if you were a top five in the competition, you actually have to answer a question on stage. So we were in some city in South Africa and I was busy um, listening to the question that I had and all of a sudden, I just couldn't get the English words to say. I couldn't get the English words to say and I heard the whole crowd say, boo. And since that moment, public speaking was one of my biggest fears. And on that note and on that question to help you, what I've done to overcome my public speaking fears was to first of all, practice my English. So if you have to speak in English, make sure that you are comfortable with English. And the only way to practice is, it is to talk it. So I had one of my best friends who I studied with in, in Bloemfontein. We only spoke English together and we still speak English together. So can you imagine all of the Afrikaans people in Bloemfontein looking at us, Afrikaans to girls, <laughs> thinking that we're crazy. But that is what I've done to actually prepare myself. And then to also know that you're human you make mistakes and I've seen that those are some of the instances where people feel more related to you, where they feel like they can really, um, 
I wouldn't say sympathize with you, but they feel like you're human. And uh, so don't be too afraid to make mistakes, but be well prepared. But remember that you are, you are human and try to practice your English or Afrikaans, whichever uh, topic it is you're going to speak on. Let me see, any other? Leticia Mathieu, can you talk for us a bit more about where... Oh, if you are English and I speak Afrikaans, they have a setting on YouTube where you can actually set uh, subtitles for YouTube subtitles to come on. So please do that if you are English. But Leticia is asking me that whether I could share a bit more detail on Vita Health. So it is actually Revita Health where we're going to do retreats. So some of you might know, some of you might not know that I started a health center with my sister-in-law called Revita Health. It's here on Valdevi Estate. And we have a very exciting project coming up. We are starting with Revita Health retreats. So we have a four-day retreat and a five-day retreat. And our aim with the retreats is to literally equip women to live healthy lifestyles because by living a healthy lifestyle you can prevent diseases, you can prevent aging and you can have a big influence on your health. So we're doing the four and five day retreats here on Valdevi Estate. It's actually starting in September and we're so excited to be able to do that. So I'll be doing coaching, group coaching and personal coaching and my sister-in-law will be doing all of the clinical work and that is what we're doing here at the Revital. We look at any other questions. Um, what makes you confident, Nana Kizi? That is a difficult question, <laughs> but I think that the one thing that makes me confident is not preparing or comparing myself to others. And, you know, you know it's, a, it's a long story, but when I was, I think I was 15 years old, I had an elderly lady, had to, she measured my hip circumference. And I remember she stood there, she measured it, and she said, 95 centimeters, you'll have to get it down to at least 90 centimeters, little lady. And from that moment, I found myself changed. I completely changed. The young girl who believed that she can do anything she wanted to disappeared. And from that moment, the woman called Perfect, this measuring tape called Perfect, started measuring me. She measured me in primary school uh, because I had curly hair and skinny legs. In high school, she measured my ability to be a leader and to get accepted to study medicine. When I was in, in varsity, she measured my ability to study and when I entered Miss South Africa, my ability to speak English. So this measuring tape tightened and tightened and tightened and it finally suffocated me when I became a wife and a mother. I think that was probably the most difficult time in my life as I was still studying medicine. When our son was born, my husband was in Cape Town, I was in Bloemfontein and I just suffocated. I constantly felt guilty, had a lack of self-confidence because either I wasn't studying hard enough or I didn't spend enough time with my son and with my family. And I realized that there has to be more to being a woman than constantly trying to be perfect. So as soon as I, um, I did months of research, I started studying my master's degree in coaching. I started praying, I, I traveled just to equip myself to say, no perfect, you can't steal my self-confidence. And I think that's what makes me confident, realizing that I can stand up and say no, that there is no such thing as perfect. Perfect is not a human quality and you can't pretend like it is because it is not. So accepting yourself for who you are, but also knowing that you should be yourself, but you should be your best self. Um, and that's what gives me confidence. Um, let's look at some of the other questions. 
Thank you for joining, Marijke. <laughs> okay, someone is Amuri Faber. This is another Afrikaans one. I'll read it for you in English as well. Hoe motiveer jy jouself om op te staan en te gaan oefen? Hoeveel daar per week behoor dames te oefen? Okay, so Amuri is asking me how do I motivate myself to get up in the mornings and go exercise? And... This is also difficult because some days it is easier than other days, but I think the one thing that we all should know is that it's important to focus on our health, but part of that is finding something that works for you. If you find it easy to get up at five in the morning and go exercise, by all means go do it. But if you find it easier to go after work, as long as you just go and, and you focus on your health and your well-being. So find what works best for you. What I usually say is when it comes to your health, it's your lane, your race, your pace. Don't look at other people. Do it on your terms. Do it in your lane and at your, your pace. And um, yes, do what works best for you. And as soon as I started focusing on my health from the inside out, rather than just on the way I look, I also found it more motivating because I knew that everything that I do has uh, an influence on my health. And that helped me a lot. Okay, I see we're almost at 12 minutes. So that means the, the video is getting a bit long, but... Um, let's see what other questions you guys have. Ooh, okay, Vanessa Jardim, what is your biggest fear? Um, well, I think that since I've become a mom, <laughs> my biggest fear kind of changed. I think that one of my fears are to grow old and not be able to remember my loved ones. And I've also mentioned this in one of my previous videos that I'm so, so, so family driven. And we've had a few members in our family who had Alzheimer's disease. And I saw how much it hurt the people around them. So I think one of my fears is definitely not being able to remember my loved ones and my children. And then, what other fears do I have? Yes, not doing whatever I try to do to my fullest. So uh, if I die one day, I want people rem to remember me as Rolene, the woman who did everything she did to her fullest, whether it was being a mom, being a wife, starting a business, uh, whatever I do, I want to do to my best of abilities and to my fullest. Okay, last question. Otherwise, this video is getting way too long. Um, let me see, I'm scrolling up a bit see what other questions there are. Sorry, I know I'm making you I'm making you wait. Oh Danilo Aquisto. I want to know what's coming for your YouTube channel in the future. Well, um, that is a very, um, very important question, actually. And I've been wanting to speak to all of you about it as well. Um, so I'm really excited about my channel. And I, I do have a long term a strategic plan with the YouTube channel. And I think that, well, one of my goals, as I've mentioned, was to hit 10,000 subscribers. And after I hit 10,000 subscribers, I'm going to an, into a new phase of my YouTube video. So the first way phase was literally to just post videos where you can get to know me as Rolene and not as Miss South Africa or Miss World. And I, I have so much that I want to share and so much that I still have to learn. And... 
I believe that my channel is going to into a direction where hopefully I'll be able to, to share some of those things that I've learned with you. And I've heard some of you ask me, you know, how do you do this or how do you do that? How do you stay self-confident? I'm thinking of this channel moving into a self-help channel where you can watch some of the videos and get inspired. And um, I'll definitely be using my coaching background to, to do that as well. So I'll obviously always still uh, have my vlogs so you can see what goes on on a day-to-day -day basis and what I get up to. But otherwise... Would you love that? Would you would you like it? So maybe I should ask you, would you like it if I start sharing a bit more of the things that I've learned, of the lessons I've learned in life, um, some of the coaching things that I go through? Uh, please let me know if you would like that. Um, okay, Catherine says yes, Marika says yes, so that is very good news. Um, so that might be something to look forward to in the future. Before I end off this video, I really wanted to thank each one of you and I want to thank you again for subscribing. Thank you for joining and I really, really, really appreciate it. Thank you once again. I hope you have a lovely day. Bye.